Hey, Dad, you ever going to finish that Jeep bumper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're finishing up our Jeep JK front bumper build. Uh, this is part two, part one a few weeks ago where you saw us take the DXF files we purchased from Madden USA and put them into our CAD program and then we cut out all the different components of the bumper. Uh, what you're seeing right now is the top plate of the bumper is flat on the table with a jig that is one of the DXF files in the Madden USA package. I tack welded on there and I'm tack welding uh, the second piece that is in the, in the design. The jig that they provide the DXF file is really nice because it sets all the angles, all the vertical angles starting at the center line uh, and working from top down. Uh, and as you can see is we just place that top plate for the bumper on there and we just just build down off of it. Uh, the, the jig takes care of the line, like I said, vertically and then you build to the left and the right. Uh, the tricky part, one of the tricky parts about building a bumper like this is that you have to make sure, even though that the jig is lined up the angles where you see uh, the jig welded into place, it's up to who's ever welding it together to make sure that you carry those angles out. It's not necessarily difficult, but you have to make sure that they're really fairly close and you're taking uh, account where you tack weld so when you start finish welding, even though it's 316, you don't warp it out a little bit. As you watch me tack together all the different components on this bumper, I'll explain how the process works a little bit. After you get everything tacked up, you're going to want to test fit the bumper on the vehicle. Make sure that the mounting holes line up, it's not too far off to one side. And then you take it back off, and then you'll actually start finish welding the joints in between at all the angles. Now while you are going to grind these down to contour them, you do want to make sure that you do get really good welds in there, not only for the structure, but for the finished product too. You don't want to have to have be filling in pinholes and with a lot of body putty. So what you're seeing now is the front plate of the bumper. I'm gonna go and explain this a little bit. It's 316, so using a even using a brake wouldn't be normally uh, you would get a very good bend on this, but as you see that the Madden USA DXF file does include relief cuts in the front for easy bending, not just with the brake, but you can use a pair of channel locks or even a set of crescent wrenches and some clamps. And now the front's tacked on, I start building out the sides. Again, the procedure is the same, making sure everything's lined up nice and uh, making sure you're putting the right component in the right place and you just tack together at a few different points. You don't have to get too crazy with the tack welds as long as they're going to hold. And you don't want, you want to limit yourself a little bit just in case you do have to cut that uh, piece off to reposition it. You're not having to cut through six tack welds. One of the reasons that jig is so important in making sure that your angle's coming off uh, all the components tacked to that jig are so important is that you may not know that you're off too much until you get to about this this position or this far into the build, bumper build is you may be off like a quarter inch and at that point you're the correct way would be to break it down to where you find the incorrect angle or you're going to be stuck uh, grinding off and the geometry of the bumper is going to be all wrong. of it. Um, I know that there is a 
an opening for the winch cable and then there is nothing on the top and we decided to do that because that's how the DXF files came and I'm sure it's so that you can actually uh, make your own width and depth cut on the top and we decided just to cut just as the DXF files came just to see how it turned out and to make sure we didn't mess anything up by doing changing the DXF files that we got from that in USA. And at a later time, we just try to add a winch. We'll just go ahead and uh, cut out whatever we need. There's plenty of these files that run around with the winch company. Now, as you can see, we're grinding off the tack welds for the jig, and it's done its job, so now it's more or less scrap metal. And we're moving on to the actual mounting points for the, the, G, or the bumper to the G. Uh, you saw us bend them out, and now you see us, uh, they're already packed in there. You just gotta, every, all the angles fit in a certain only one way so if it's not the if it's not in the right position it won't look right just make sure all the joints are flush to the bumper and which i'm on in now is the winch plate which has all the correct bolt patterns already in the dxf so it's really easy to cut now you see me starting to finish up welding out the bumper i'm not going to show all of it because it took a long time actually i had to uh, let it go for one night and get out in the morning because i ended up heating the metal up so much so, and then that's the relief cut right there I'm welding, the one that we talked about earlier. Super easy just to fill right back in and grind smooth. Um, I did include this, the priming of the bumper, because uh, even if you're super careful, there's a good chance that you'll end up with a slight low spot. And what we're using here is an automotive primer. It's a high build primer, and uh, we go over, prime the whole bumper, and then we'll end up block sanding and finding all the low points and building them up with the primer. And obviously the primer gives them a nice base too. So, and there's the finished product. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments section.